Okay, so what are we into today at the lake? So our situation is our trusty 1996 GSX uh, 787 motor uh, has been having some issues for a while where you can't hear uh, the beeper when you put the tether on for the DESS. And that makes it hard for inexperienced riders, especially because they don't know if they have the tether on correctly then or not. And we've just been kind of going, ah, forget about that, let's keep riding it. But lately, we've been getting some intermittent no start. We've been getting some crank, but no spark. And we really got three issues we need to deal with. One is... We've got a gauge that's got the UV film, the polarizing film, that is just beyond screwed. Like that gauge could be saying, you know, auto destruct is set. We can't tell. You can't read anything on this gauge right now. This is a total non info gauge. So we're going to rip this gauge apart. We're going to put in one of these film kits we bought off the internet. We're going to show you how to do that. We've also got a start stop button that is really, really died of old age. Uh, we think it may be getting water in it at this point. And we're going to replace the DESS post. Um, you know, if I had my way, I'd 86 all this DESS crap for a standard kill switch like an early CU has. But the MPEM expects both the physical electrical connection on the DESS post and the correct code from the tether to run. And there's no great way to bypass that. You know, you could take your post, mount it in your electrical box somehow, leave the tether in there, and then add another mechanical kill switch or something. Um, at this point, that doesn't seem worthwhile. So we're going to replace the post, fix the gauge, fix the start stop button, and we've got a new, we actually just broke down and bought a new beeper. So we are going to replace the beeper as well because it's just super annoying not having any beeper. So we are going to replace that beeper as well. So we're going to get started here and as we get this tore apart, we'll show you some of what's involved on especially disassembling the gauge, getting in under the handlebars. And that's what we're into today at the okay, lake. Okay, so what are we into today at the lake? Actually, we're on this uh, GSX, our trusty GSX, that's got the no start, and we don't know what the heck. Could have some obvious warning message on the screen because you can't read it. So um, we're going to replace that film, but you got to get this bezel off, right? So, and to get the bezel off, uh, you're a lot of stupid cut it off and wrap it with tape and that's all dumb right so what you want to do if you look down at it from the top you can see where I've started here see how it's bent down to secure it and how I've straightened all of this well and you're saying well how do you straighten all of that well it's really simple right it's like an old school World War II can opener get a straight screwdriver and then watch what I'm doing just go along real easy and wiggle and see how the shoulder of the screwdriver is raising that uh, formed edge right up, right? And you can just work your way around. Now, this is not fast. This is not fast. This is going to take 20 minutes. I don't expect you to sit there for 20 minutes and watch me do this. But if you don't get radical with these... You can unfold this the entire way and then just slide this bezel off and then we can come back when we're done we can slide it on and we can protect our our players rough surface with some tape and we can just squeeze this we can crimp this back together exactly like it was and rather than some of these really crazy ideas to replace this so uh, that will come back after we get this open I want to show you how we got in here too because that's not super obvious but uh, we'll get this off of here and then we'll talk about that okay so I went around there we pried that edge up all the way around now once that's done you can just walk this bezel right down and take it all the way off the gauge just be careful 
Now what you want to do, you can see that this isn't perfectly straight. Now we'll make it a little hard to put back on. So what I like to do is take this on a hard surface and take something like a socket and just roll it on here or a nut driver, something round and smooth and just smooth that all out. And then it'll go on really easy and it'll be a lot easier to recrimp. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then to get into the gauge, um, you gotta get the gasket off here, which of course has got a little glue on it, but you can hear it popping loose. Once we get the gasket loose, we get the, the plastic bezel off, then uh, I'll show you how we proceed to, well, stand by. Uh, this one is really tight. I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver and pry a little bit on this one to pop it loose. We'll come back in just a sec after I get this popped loose and I'll show you what I'll show you how it fits together. I can't get it with my hand. My hand's getting tired. Okay, sorry about that, but I had to I had to go get a screwdriver because I this one was really, really stuck. So you can see it's just a rubber gasket and it fits over a flange on the lens and then it seals against here. But this one was like super duper stuck on there. So I had to get a little screwdriver and pry just a little bit in a couple spots to get this started. So, and then once you're in here, now I'll pop this apart and then we'll come back again in a minute and I'll show you how this fits together because we got to get past this to get to the front. Okay, so uh, what you got to do to separate the gauge, right? After you take this, this uh, there's a metal plate on here. It fell down in here. Take these three screws out that sit in here, and then I like to just push the whole grommet into the gauge. Then you can reach your thumb in and push on this, the back of the circuit board, and you can push the guts right out. Now all we gotta do is take this screw and this screw out, and that will allow us to separate the display, the monitor face, if you will. So we're gonna do that quick, and then we'll tear this apart and we'll show you the last step to get at the, the film. Thanks. Okay, so we're back on this gauge. After you take this screw and this screw out, then you can just carefully separate this connector. And then I took out these four screws, and that allows you to separate the display from the front screen. So you can see how badly <laughs> destroyed this one is. We're gonna have a little challenge here because we've actually got some some uh, transfer to this face. So I gotta do a little thinking about how I'm gonna clean that up. But first we've gotta get, I'll show you in a minute, we'll come back and I'll show you how we're gonna tackle getting this off of here and then get ready to put a new piece on. Okay, so uh, we're ready to try to get this film off and you can see this, is, this one's really, really cooked. So what I find is, I think razor blades are too flimsy. I like to just grab a utility knife blade, a brand new one that's clean Put a glove on your hand you're holding with, you know, a good glove that will protect yourself from an inadvertent slip and then just start at a corner and just go slow, All right? Just push the razor under the film. You do not want to break this film into a thousand little pieces if you can help it. It's a lot faster ultimately to go slow and get it to come off in a big piece than it is to break it up and have to deal with a bunch of delaminating and a bunch of nonsense. So again, just go easy, just sort of rock the blade, reasonable pressure. I mean, and you can see that this is bad film, right? I, they usually don't get this bad. People, this one, we haven't been able to read this one in years. <laughs> Usually people fix them or buy a different one before they let them get this bad. But so this, this is a good example of you won't likely find yours this bad. But uh, just go easy. Don't, don't force the issue, right? Just go easy. I'm just working it all the way around. I want to get it started all the way around by rocking the utility knife like this. And once I get all four corners up well then, and I'm just gonna rock it in on this corner now that I was able to get this started and just keep doing that. 
just keep rocking it towards the center. Now I'm going to rock down here and get this corner. And you know you, you got to make sure that you've got a clean new blade because otherwise you will scratch or make marks in the glass. What this this plastic is stuck to the glass front of the LCD screen, and so you don't want to mark up that face, or those you know those marks will show. So I'm going to cheat back to this corner and come the other way again. And I'm trying to free this up all the way to the bottom here. There we go. And I'm just rocking my knife again. And I'm getting there. I got a lot of it free already. Now I'm just going to rock in this way. And I'm trying to avoid the urge to pull. Because when you pull, that's when you start separating it into a bunch of pieces. I never have any luck pulling until I've had I've loosened it everywhere with the blade, right? You want to get the blade so that it's been underneath the entire thing before you think about pulling on it. Otherwise, it'll just come apart. So we're almost there. Almost been to the middle from both sides. Gets a little trickier here because the 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 film is starting to get in its own way, so I'm going to hold it back with my thumb here now. Come in from this side, go get to the center. And I think where she's about to pop off. Right there we go. And so now, comes right off, right? No effort, no pulling, no 47 pieces. i got to deal with a little bit of adhesive here that I'm going to use some Goo Gone on. But that's the way you get them off. Don't rush it, just go nice and easy. We'll clean this up and uh, we'll come back when we're getting ready to put the other one on. Okay, so we've got the uh, gauge rebuilt, got the new film on it. Uh, really the only challenging part of that is to um, make sure that you are orienting the film the right way. Your film should come indicating up or top make sure you put it on correctly um, our challenge beyond getting that film replaced was on the gauge face itself we had a discolored section right there where it had, the film had actually transferred and burnt the uh, lens bezel a little so we we uh, scraped on it a lot to the point where we've almost created a little bit of a lens effect right there. Might not see it on the phone, but um, we got to the point where we didn't think we could safely scrape anymore. So, but we ended up going back and uh, polishing the inside of the face here with the same stuff we use to polish plastic car headlights, same process, and then just wiping it with the same 3M headlight clear coat. And we had some nicks and scuffs in the outer bezel, so we just did that at the same time. Just get that cleaned up so it's all going to be good when we put it back together. Um, so we got to do now, put a couple screws back in, and then we've got a, we'll come back and I'll show you how we crimp the, that retaining ring back on the gauge. Okay, so uh, after you get the gauge back together, I just wanted to show how I recrimp this. I just take a regular pliers, I wrap the upper jaw with tape so you don't make marks on the upper face and then just nice and easy go around and recrimp this edge that you opened to get the face off, right? And if you do this carefully, you end up with essentially exactly the same way the factory had this. And you can just go back and redo any places where you're not happy with how much it crimps down. Just go back and crimp it down some more, right? And just keep working your way slowly around the gauge. And uh, eventually you can get the whole thing recrimped. And so that's what we're into today at the lake. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit in reverse order, but one of the things we wanted to show was how this cowl comes off. You can see that these tabs are open to the back. They're in these slots and then they're grabbing here. And these washers and screws in the front drop in these holes and then slide back to engage. So the installation is drop it in, 
make sure these tabs are in and then the whole thing goes back and the removal is exactly the opposite of this right if you want to take it off you just go and off it comes right it's not very obvious from the stuff you see online but that's how it works and that's what we're into today at the lake